let's really look at what children are. What children are is this. He is God. He is God's children. Remember, I drew them as little souls, if you like. He is God's children. Then the child incarnates, created, attached to a body. Whose child is that? It's God's child. And who is that in relation to me if I created this body? That's my brother or sister. Right. See, this one of the biggest problems we have on this planet, and to be frank with you, it causes a, a lot of issues with families, education, all sorts of other issues, is this belief that my child is my child. The ch- I'm sorry, your child is not your child. The child is God's child, and all you did was create a body for it. That's all you did through your desire to have sex. That's the only thing that happened. It is not your child. Stop thinking you own your children, right? Or can even own your children. Now, this is a very important thing to understand because if I stop owning my children and I start seeing this particular child that I created, God's child that I created bodies for. So all all I did was create the bodies. In fact, I don't even know how I created the bodies. It was just this sex act thing that occurs that I wanted to do. And in that process, the bodies were created. But who knows scientifically how that occurred? Most of us have totally clueless about that operation. So we can't even say that we even created the bodies, really, could we? It was the entire process that God put together to create the bodies that we can enjoy the process of. So these two bodies I created in a very, very loose way. Right? I didn't create this soul, and this soul is not my child. This soul is God's child. In fact, it's half of one of God's child children. Now, what's my focus then as a parent? My focus as a parent stops being, don't you do anything to my child, this is my child, getting my child to make me proud, all that crap goes. Because all we're focused on now is teaching this child about God's love for it. And as that child learns about God's love for it, it will learn everything else automatically. And that's how simple it is to bring up a child. But what do we do? We go down this other road. And by the way, in the first century, I didn't go down that road because the time that Mary and I conceived a child together, within a few months I was crucified. So I didn't have that experience. But trust me, in this life I've had the experience now. One of the reasons why we had the experience and chose the experience that we've done is so that I could experience some things that I didn't know about in the first century. And this experience of having children, I've gone down the track for for the first 12 or 13 years of their life of thinking them as my children, just like probably many of you have. Now I see them in a completely different way. They are just my brother. I've got two sons and they are my brothers. And uh, you've seen one of my brothers, and he's pretty close to me. Tristan, would you like to stand up so people who haven't met you? There's my close brother, Tristan. So Tristan feels himself also to not be my son anymore. He feels that we're brothers too. Okay, and we both feel like we're children of God. Right. So, so the beauty of of understanding it that way means that I'm not ever now going to impose my will upon this child because this child is not mine. I understand that completely. This child is God's child 
who I can love just like any other child. So I love Tristan the same amount as I love all of you, but we obviously have a special bond because he and I are on the same path spiritually, growing towards God, both recognizing very, very similar things. And because Tristan is growing very rapidly uh, in terms of this on this relationship with God, I feel very close to him as a result of that. Because anybody who's not growing on the relationship with God, I feel close to. And also because I've known him for a lot of his life and seen the changes that he's made because of the choices that he is making, got nothing to do with me, it's the choices that he is making that is causing him to change. Now, the relationship that I honour with Tristan the most is his relationship with his soulmate. That's the relationship I honour. Because that is the other half of him. And in fact, it is going to be the soulmate relationship that is going to be the only permanent relationship that you will have. And when I say permanent, I don't mean that you won't have relationships with other people that last thousands of years or even hundreds of thousands of years. What I'm saying is that the soulmate relationship is you are both halves of the same entity. So therefore, you are going to at some point recognize that and at some point you'll get to the point where you are combined as one and you will be the one entity. Um, even though you may have two bodies connected. You may even have four bodies connected. Because remember, you, you can be this person on earth. And remember, on earth, you at the moment have two bodies. You have a spirit body and a material body. And then your soulmate has a spirit body and material body. So there's two bodies each. So there's four bodies connected to this one entity, the soul. So it doesn't worry about the bodies. We're talking about the soul itself. So... So you will get to the stage where instead of seeing children as yours, you will see them as God's. And so you will also see your role. Your role as their older brother or sister is to help educate them in God's love. That's your role. And in fact, God created the universe to assist you to do that. There is just so many things on this planet and in the universe itself that can assist you to tell and educate your children about their connection with God. But the problem is nowadays, we just view it as all that, like evolution all just popped into you know, here by chance and everything and we dismiss that there was ever even a creator of it all and we go down this other track of uh, going all scientific and teaching them about evolution and what are we really teaching them in the end? We're teaching them to detune from the fact that they are God's child. And remember I said earlier, how did all of our problems come about? Because the first human couple decided to detune from their relationship with God. And we are reinfecting that choice over and over and over and over and over and over with our children, so-called children, our children, which are not our children, our gods. <laughs>